This is a Curious Wanderer production. Are we all related? In genealogy, a common ancestor of any set of individuals is defined as someone from whom all the people in the group are descendant. For example, you and your cousin are descendants of the same grandparents, so your grandfather and his parents are the common ancestors of you and your cousin. The most recent common ancestor, or MRCA, is the common ancestor from where a set of individuals are directly descendant. So in this example, your grandfather will be the most common recent ancestor of you and your cousin. We can expand this scenario to include your second cousins, third cousins and so on and you can see that with the addition of every new branch, your common ancestor moves back a generation. So how far do we need to go back to find the most recent common ancestor of all human beings who are presently alive? Let's do some calculations. Assume you are the first generation and you have two parents. In a random mating model where two people can mate randomly per generation, your parents' parents combined will be four people and their parents combined will be eight people and so on. If generations are discrete and non-overlapping, then it means that n generations back, there will be two raised to the power n people. Assuming a generation is at most 30 years, then it means a thousand years or roughly 30 generations ago, there will be two raised to the power 30 or over 1 billion people in the world. However, we know that this is not the case. Historians have put the population of the world at that time to be around 300 million. In a pure random mating with two parents per individual and a constant population size, we can find the number of generations to the most recent common ancestor by taking the log with base 2 of the population size. The world's current population is 7 billion and by this method, the most common recent ancestor of present day humans lived only 30 generations or roughly 700 years ago, which is roughly 1300 AD. This doesn't sound right as the Americas and Australia were not even discovered at that time. The problem with the above model is that the ancestry tree is not a binary tree. Mating patterns are structured by geography, proximity, culture, language and social class. This leads to pedigree collapse, which is a phenomenon where reproduction between two individuals who share an ancestor causes the number of distinct ancestors in the family tree of their offspring to be smaller than it could otherwise be. In 2004, Douglas L. T. Road, Steve Olson, and Joseph T. Chank wrote a paper in the scientific journal Nature, where they used common models to identify the most recent common ancestor of present-day living humans. Their models are centered around local mating, as it is very unlikely that parents would have children far away from where they live, but at the same time, their models allowed a small number of random mating. They split the world into continents, countries, and towns, which are not just geographic positions but can be viewed as abstract pools from which one is more or less likely to choose a mate. These pools can be geographic, religious, or cultural. The model also accounted for a limited amount of migration out of towns, countries, and continents. The arrows in the diagram show the number of persons leaving a particular zone per generation. According to their calculations, if 5% of individuals left their hometown per generation, 0.05% migrated out of their home country, then the most recent common ancestor of everyone who is presently alive would have lived in 1415 BC, that is around 3400 years ago. However, these migration estimates are far too conservative. For example, it assumes that only 50 people leave per country in the densely populated Eurasia. If the migration among towns is increased to 20% and other numbers are increased by a factor of 5 or 10, then our most common recent ancestor lived around 85.5, that is roughly 2000 years ago. They also discovered that it takes 1.7 times the total number of generations from MRCA where every individual is either an ancestor of the whole world today or else is an ancestor of no one alive today. This is quite fascinating. What this tells us that before 1000 BC, every single human is either an ancestor of no one alive today or an ancestor of everyone alive today. Between 1000 BC and 5580, every single human is either an ancestor of no one alive today, an ancestor of everyone alive today, or an ancestor of some people alive today. After 5580, every single human is either an ancestor of no one alive today or an ancestor of some people alive today. This means that we are all descendants of one single human who lived around 55 AD and therefore we are all related, some more than others. If you want to learn more about this topic or you want to read the original research paper, please check the links in the description below. I hope you have enjoyed our video. If you think that this has earned your subscription, then please don't forget to subscribe, like and share with your friends. Thank you.